What's up everyone, my name is Joe and this is Different Take. If you're new to the channel and you like movies as much as I do, make sure to subscribe and remember to click the bell so you don't miss out on any new content. You know, the numbers say that if I say that, you're more likely to subscribe. You're also more likely to be annoyed. What are some of your favorite horror movies of 2021 so far? Let me know down in the comments below. I will have an honorable mention or two, probably before number one, so make sure to stay tuned for that. This will be a two-part list, so make sure to keep an eye out for part two. Keep in mind, this is horror movies of 2021, so whether they're horror comedy, horror action, horror romance, horror drama, doesn't necessarily mean it has to be scary, it just has to be horror related. Also, do not get too wrapped up in where they rank on this list. This list is not perfect. Permanent, and their spots may change at the end of the year when I do a best of 2021 video. Okay, let's get to it. These are my top 10 horror movies of 2021 so far. Here we go. The bear, he'll kill you all. <laughs> Benny Loves You is a completely ridiculous, over the top, just hilarious movie. Play with Benny. I mean, it's insane but it works. It also has like this Edgar Wright style editing that really adds to like the pace and like the feeling of the movie and it's just fun. With the low budget that it has, the effects are really good. Sometimes you're sort of like blown away about how good it looks. <laughs> Benny Loves You is a ball of fun. Werewolves Within is from director Josh Rubin, who I'm a big fan of. He directed Scare Me, which came out last year, which I love that movie. This movie is like a horror comedy, whodunit murder mystery, which that's like the best of both worlds right there. I like it. A what? Like a, a werewolf. I love the humor in the movie. It's not like you were just paying attention to who was just right in front of the camera. You had to sort of pay attention to who was off to the side, maybe people in the back. Also, this movie has a really strong ensemble cast with Guillermo from What We Do in the Shadows, Milana Vainthrub, Vainthrub? Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce the name. Sorry, did I pronounce the name? And a really strong performance from Sam Richardson. He probably was my favorite performance in the movie. Please don't Bear bum the luck. Me. I oh my goodness, I could have gotten it. It's funny, it's smart, it's got a good script. I mean, I really enjoyed Werewolves Within. <laughs> Vicious Fun has got a goofy premise, but it's, it's funny, it's fun. There's some good gore in there. If you're a fan of horror, you're gonna get the little nods and the little things here and there. Also, the humor is very self-aware doesn't take itself too seriously. It also has a really strong performance from Evan Marsh, the lead in this movie. He was surprisingly hysterical. I, I thought he did such a good job. <laughs> Vicious Fun is exactly as advertised. Vicious Fun. I don't want to be sick. My Heart Can't Beat Unless You Tell It To is very, how am I gonna say this? I can see a lot of horror fans not liking this movie. It's more of a drama horror movie, but it's unsettling. It's a really good looking movie. It's well acted, it's well written. It grabs your attention. It's really compelling. If you or anyone close to you suffers from a chronic illness, this movie may hit a little too close to home for you. It's, it's heavy. Not just how much it puts on the other person, but how much it really weighs on the person with the chronic illness. It's a it's a heavy, sort of bleak movie, but it's really good. A Ghost Waits is probably another one. It's more like a romantic horror movie, and it's like a low budget indie movie, but I really like this movie. Why are you here? To fix the house? I was expecting to laugh in this movie, but I was not expecting to feel as much as I felt in this movie. It's funny but it can get kind of heavy as well. I have a lot of questions. Uh, how does one become a ghost? Can you walk through walls? They shot it in like black and white, the like grayscale, and it just really adds to the overall feel of this movie. You want a beer? Can ghosts have beer? Kudos to the cast and crew because this one sort of came out of nowhere and just sort of just grabbed me, grabbed me by the heart there. I love this movie. St. Maud should probably technically be a little bit higher because I know it's a really, really good movie, but I also didn't want to be too predictable. I mean, it's a slow burn, a really slow burn, and it's more of a, like a psychological horror. St. Maud also has a lot to say in regards to like faith and religion and all that sort of stuff. The movie's kind of uncomfortable to watch. You don't know when sort of disaster's gonna strike 
in one way or the other. You just, but you don't know how it's going to happen. So you're sort of just waiting. And when it finally does happen, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know what scene I'm talking about if you've seen this movie. It's like a what, just what. Yeah, St. Maud is, yeah. The Dark and the Wicked is exactly that. It is a very dark, wicked, bleak, uh, full of dread, put it that way. This movie is not a fun watch. It's scary as hell. And when you watch it, you're sort of just waiting for something good to happen. And it just never really does. <laughs> Get done watching, you're like, ugh. I'm in no rush to watch this movie again. It just kind of creeped me out. And it was that sort of like, ugh, yeah, not a good time. <laughs> Caveat is another really good slow burn horror movie. I really like this movie. It's a low budget movie, but it's really effective with building tension and suspense. And there's a lot of good scary parts in it. It's a lot of edge of your seat. You're like, ooh, and it's coming, but you know it. And you just, oh, you don't want to, you know. You have to put your phone down. You got to put everything, all the distractions away. Just turn the lights off and just watch the movie. Plus, there is a genuinely frightening jump scare in this movie. I'm not going to say what it is. You'll know it when you see it. But I literally jumped out of my seat. I was like, oh, no. It's also another horror movie from Ireland. There has been a lot of really good horror movies coming from Ireland lately. They've been really stepping it up and just movies in general. So good on you, Ireland. Seriously, keep it up. I'm half Irish, half Italian. So, you know. The Vigil is very similar, at least I think, to Caveat. It just really does a good job of building tension and suspense and really pays off with the scares. There's some really good mood and atmosphere in this movie. I love the lighting in this movie. I love the shadows and the, how it plays with you and sort of different areas of the house. It just seems to be all filmed in this one spot, but it's really effective. Plus there is a scene where you kind of see a figure in the corner in the shadow and we've all had that moment where we're looking in the shadows no matter where we are, and we see something that's there that may or may not be there, it's really creepy. Let's get to the honorable mentions real quick. Unfortunately, I filmed this before The Night House released. The Night House, yeah, that's gonna be one that's definitely gonna be on this list at the end of the year. It looks really good. If you haven't seen the trailer, go check it out. Another honorable mention is Boys From County Hell, another horror movie from Ireland, it's a horror comedy. And to be honest with you, I saw it, but I was doing a couple other things when I watched this. I really couldn't give it my full attention. I know it was a good movie. I know it was funny. I just, I wanna watch it again before I actually place it on this list. And honorable mention number three, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Yeah, give or take. I really had high expectations for this movie. I think all of us did, but unfortunately it just didn't really land and it kind of got into the whole supernatural aspect of it and just went completely off course. Like it went off the rails in terms of the story. And when you're watching, you're just kind of just like, all right, this is getting a little ridiculous. <sighs> Swing and a miss, but what are you gonna do? I hate to be predictable, but this movie was just too good for me. I did not expect them to nail this sequel like they did. There's a lot of hype, a lot of expectations, and they knocked it out of the park. They really stayed true to what worked well with the original. They did not veer too far off the path. They didn't really go into any other things too much. It's almost as scary and intense and almost as good as the original. I mean, it's right there, neck and neck. I mean. What more can you ask for? Make sure to check out part two of this video. I'll put a link to it up here and down in the description. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on social media for all channel updates in the in-between time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace y'all. Thank you, Selena. Take it away.